so this is to you yeah as we said the symptoms are less than signs so patient would present with mainly a swelling in the foot and ankle region pain may not be present some patients may complain of pain and main patient problem is that he is not able to walk properly he is at difficulty in walking so swelling along with difficulty in walking that is the main complaint especially in the early stages of the patient so when i talk to you about pain being 50% this is what literature says but we usually see them as painless joints classical so acute shakat neuropathy is clearly reinforced is swollen and erythematous on inspection palpation it will be warm so about 3.3 degree celsius warmer than the contralateral side so you always compare confused with infections erythema will decrease with elevation in charcots but infections they usually do not have changes in this erythema on limb elevation yes chronic uh, you will have deformities you will have palpable bony prominences the the anatomy is totally deranged it's a deformed joint as the arch of the foot will be gone it's a rocker bottom deformity and you can have a ligamentous instability but at the end stage it's a usually usually a stiff joint and uh, you can do a neurovascular assessment by the wenstein monofilament testing which can tell you about the sensations and the other assessments as clearly said again repeating the same thing initial stages x rays are normal and that is why one of the most important x ray is standard ap and lateral of foot especially weight bearing views so this is very important weight bearing x ray these are not usually done uh, uh, usually you get a simple plain ap la lateral in a supine or a lying down position but to detect early changes of a collapse we need to have a weight bearing x ray so whenever you are suspecting any uh, uh, neuropathic joint especially lower limb always always ask for a weight bearing views of the ankle and foot because there is the on the weight bearing you will be able to detect the early changes right and then uh, in early changes sometimes you can see the degenerative changes that may make osteoarthritis and in late stages classically there will be loss of joint space because the cartilage is getting away joint space is cartilage fragmentation of both articular surface of joint leading to subluxation or dislocation so you have destruction you have dislocation you have debris scattered chunks of bone and fibrous tissue that's the debris surrounding soft tissue edema but the edema is more in the initial stages and keeps on going down and uh, they can be an heterotrophic ossification which can be picked up so this is a disease where there is both destruction along with lots of new bone formation so very typical uh the x-ray would be really devastating x-rays which you won't be able to make out maybe on just a simple uh, observation or inspection of the foot so x-rays all signs are out of proportion to the symptoms, symptoms. when we come to bone scan this is uh, one investigation which can help you uh, differentiate from uh, osteomyelitis but the difference is in not the classical technetium bone scan because the classical bone scan that we do is technetium and in technetium it's positive for both neuropathic and osteomyelitis but it's more specific on indias indium scan which is wbc scan which is more uh, sensitive and specific for osteomyelitis so it will be negative in charcots and positive for osteomyelitis so this can be a theoretical question which some new and young examiners will ask you and uh, this also has to be thought about that charcots can have a superimposed osteomyelitis so this is also one area where you can have this investigation but mri is one investigation which can tell you about soft tissues it is the best for differentiating an abscess from soft tissue swelling as we said that it initially starts with a soft tissue swelling that keeps on going down and it's more sensitive in diagnosing soft tissue and osteomyelitis it is different difficult to differentiate infection from charcot arthropathy on mri because they all look like with marrow edema and mri will show you an marrow edema and uh, that will be present in both an osteomyelitis and uh, the charcots coming to the angles everybody has angles so the charcots also has angles so they are typical measurements on x-rays 
they can tell you the deformity and the severity of deformity in charcots and uh, it can be used from initial stages to the comparative stages one of the angles in uh, in the foot that you should remember is the mary's angle it's an angle between uh, the long axis of uh, talus and the long axis of the first metatarsal normally they are uh, parallel yes uh, so uh, the long axis of talus should be in line with the long axis of first metatarsal but if there is a collapse occurring if there is a the patient is going to a rocker bottom foot this will go the, the because there will be a break at the tmt joint so the metatarsal will start going down and there you will see a collapse remember this has to be measured on a weight bearing x rays right as we clearly said this is one of the indications of getting a weight bearing x ray done